Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the presentation of lecture 8 of computer organization course which is the second part of memory in this lecture we will discuss the internal memory or RAM and the two technologies DRAM and SRAM and the read only memory types and the read mostly memories and the cache memory first the internal memory or the main memory or RAM the main memory as you know is a collection of locations so we have many locations and each location has an address and this address will be in the binary of course and the location size is memory word and the memory word is variable and depends on the computer manufacturer so the minimum size of the word is one byte but in the modern computer it is 4 bytes or 8 bytes so we have a collection of locations and each location has an address now how many bits we need for the address it depends on this formula so n address bits can address to the power n locations so for example here if two bits are used then the two bits can address four locations if three bits are used then it can locate it can address eight locations so if we use two bits then to the power two equal four locations and if we use three bits to the power three equal eight locations so by using three bits we can address eight locations and by using eight bits we can address to the power eight which is 256 locations and in the opposite if we have the number of location, if we have the num number of location, 1024 location, it needs 10 address bits at least. So, to the power 10 will be 1024. The memory has two operations, read and write. So, we can read from the memory or write the data to the memory. And the access will be one word at a time. So, we are reading one word at a time and there is some memory called cache memory which is another type of internal memory and we will discuss the cache memory uh, in this lecture later the basic element of a memory is the memory cell and this memory cell can store either 0 or 1 so the mem each cell size is 1 bit so the memory cell operation are write and read so to to write to the memory location memory cell you have to select the cell then write the data if we read from the cell we have to select the cell then sense or read the uh, data stored in the cell and of course the data will be either zero or one so the size of the cell is one bit RAM technologies is divided into two technologies DRAM or dynamic RAM and SRAM the static RAM the difference between the DRAM and the static RAM is how the cell store the data how the cell store the data so in the DRAM as in this figure the DRAM cell the data will be stored in this cell as charge on capacitors so there will be a capacitor in each cell if the capacitor is charged it means one no charge means zero in the SRAM so there will be a flip-flop in the cell in the SRAM so this flip-flop as you know the flip-flop is memory element and the size of the flip-flop is one bit so either zero or one the in the DRAM because the capacitor is used so this capacitor will lose its content with the time so it need to be refreshed every periodic time to keep the data uh, stored in that cell so if you compare between the SRAM and the DRAM uh, both uh, the SRAM and DRAM are volatile means 
uh, it will lose its content if the power is switched off dynamic ram has the following characteristics simple to build and smaller so this the cell or the chip will be smaller than the SRAM uh, less expensive required supporting for the free refresh refresh circuitry because of the uh, capacitor and the dynamic RAM is used for large uh, memory requirement like the main memory where the static RAM is faster than the DRAM and normally it will be used for the cache memory the read only memory from its name we can read the content of this memory but we cannot change uh, or add or delete the content of this memory no power source is required to maintain the bit value in the memory because it is non-volatile non-volatile it will keep the data even without power the data will be added to the memory as a part of the fabrication process so during the manufacturing of this ROM the data will be added the cache memory the cache memory actually used because of we have a problem we have different speed between the main memory and the CPU so the CPU is fast where the main memory is very big and slow so when the, CP the CPU has to wait for a long time to read or write data to or from the main memory so the solution here is to use the cache memory between the memory and the CPU so what's the cache memory? cache memory is a small amount of very high speed memory to hold portion of the memory temporarily so the memory size the cache memory size will be smaller than the main memory but it is very high speed very fast memory so this is the solution for the problem uh, which is the difference between the different timing between uh, the CPU and memory uh, let us see how the uh, memory and cache memory are structured so the main memory as we know it is a locations and address for each location there is an address but we'll add here something called the block so the block is a collection of memory locations memory locations on the other hand the cache memory is organized as lines so we have line number zero line number one etc and each line has an address uh, the line is two parts the tag part and the block part the block size here will be the same as the block size of main memory so if the block size here is four words the line here will be four words so we'll use some formula to calculate the uh, addresses and how the address will be splitted by using the different mapping methods as we saw in the figure the cache line size is the same as the memory block size and of course we need to remember the uh, formula for the number of bits so an address bits can address to the power and memory location and also it's the same for the cache and address bits can address to the power and cache lines to calculate the number of blocks in the main memory we can use this formula the memory we divide the memory size in words divide by the block size in words and to calculate the number of lines in the cache we divide the cache size by the line size and to calculate the number of sets we can divide the number of lines over the set size so we'll use these uh, formulas later in the examples let us discuss this example first consider a main memory with size 16 megabytes and cache memory size 64 kilobytes and the memory block is 4 bytes so we'll assume the word size is 1 byte which is the minimum size of the word and we need to answer the following question the first question is how many address bits are required to address the main memory locations 
so we have a memory location the size 16 megabytes so we need to address we need to calculate how many address bits required to address this memory so we know the formula the formula is to power number bits equal the number of locations here we know the number of locations of the memory which is 16 megabytes and 16 megabytes because the, the word size is one byte it is 16 mega words and at the same time 16 mega location so if we know the number of locations of the memory and we need to calculate the address bits we need to rewrite the number of memory location to make it in this format to the power n then n will be the number of bits so if the memory size is 16 megabytes or 16 mega words so 16 means uh, 16 times 2 to the power 20 because the megabyte is 2 to the power 20 and this equals 2 to the power 24 and the number of bits are required here are 24 bits the second question is how many blocks are there in the main memory from the example we'll see the block size what's the block size is 4 bytes so to calculate the number of blocks we use this formula the number of blocks in the main memory equal the memory size in words in this case we have 16 mega words uh, divided by the block size which is here 4 so the result is 4 mega blocks how many blocks are there in the main memory is 4 mega blocks the third question is how many lines are there in the cache memory so to calculate the number of lines we divide the cache size over the line size so what's the cache size here in, in this example is 64 kilobytes so we divide 64 kilobytes over 4 which is the line size the line size is the same as the block size so we know the block size will be the same as the line size so we divide 64k over 4 and the result will be 16k lines 16k lines as you know the cache memory is always smaller than the main memory that means the memory locations will share the cache lines so in this example we have 256 times as much memory as space in the cache so it means each 256 memory location mapped to a single cache location since we have a fewer cache lines than the main memory blocks so we need some mapping method between the uh, memory blocks and the cache lines so there are three technologies are used the first mapping method is called direct mapping and the second is called assertive mapping and the third is called set assertive mapping in the direct mapping which is the simplest technology it maps each block of main memory into only one possible cache lines the assertive it maps each block of the main memory to any line of the cache in the set assertive it is between the direct and assertive instead of one possible location in the direct and any line of the cache in the assertive in the set assertive it maps each block into two lines if the two-way set assertive is used or it maps each block into four lines if the four-way set assertive is used so this figure shows for example the if we have a block in the main memory so this block by using the direct mapping could be loaded into only one line cache in the two-way set assertive it will be loaded into two lines and in the fully assertive it could be loaded to any line of the cache memory so when the uh, CPU needs to read a data the memory address will be split into three parts if the direct mapping cache is used so the first part is called tag the second is the line and the third is word uh, the W here the word means how many bits we need to identify a byte within a block of the main memory as the number of bits that identifies the block of main memory and r is the number of bits that identifies the line number of the cache memory and the s minus r is the tag so let us see uh, example how we can split the memory address into these three parts tag line and word 
So if we have a memory, main memory with uh, 16 megabytes block and the cache size 64 kilobytes and the, me the memory block is 4 bytes and the word size is 1 byte so it's the same previous example so we need to know how the, the memory address will be split into these three parts first we need to calculate the number of bits required for the memory so and we already calculate this is 24 bits and uh, we know how many blocks are there in the main memory there are four mega blocks in the main memory and how many lines in the cache memory we have uh, 16 kilo lines in the cache memory and these uh, data we calculated in the previous slides and from the example we know the block size equal 4 so first we start by the W here to calculate how many uh, bits we need for the W which is identified the word in the block so we use the block size so what's the memory block size it is 4 bytes so the 4 bytes if we can write it in the format 2 to the power w then the w will be 2 so we calculate the w from the block size then to calculate the number of bits for line we use the number of lines so if we know the number of lines then we write it in the format 2 to the power r so in this case the r equal 14 so until now we know the number of bits for w2 bits and the number of bits for line it's 14 bits we can easily calculate the number of bits for the tag because all these uh, bits the total of the, uh, these bits will be the same number of bits for memory which is 24 bits so 2 plus 14 is 16 so the remaining bits will be 8 bits for the second type of mapping the associative uh, cache mapping so the memory address will be split into two parts the word part and the tag part the word is the same identifies a byte within a block and as is identifying the block of the main memory so let us see an example how to split the memory address into uh, word and tag in the associative cache mapping technique so we use here the same example and to calculate w we calculate it from the memory block the memory block is 4 bytes so 4 is 2 to the power w then w equal 2 and to calculate the tag easily so the remaining bits if we have 2 for the memory word and the total is 24 so the tag means it will be 20 Two bits. The third uh, mapping technique is the set assertive mapping technique uh, and in this case the cache memory lines will be divided into sets so in this example the set size is two lines so each two lines of the cache memory makes one set so in this case it's called two-way assertive because we are using two lines set in the set assertive mapping the memory address will be split into three fields the word field w then the set field d and the tag field s minus d now let us take the same example and see how the the memory address uh, will be split by using the set assertive cache mapping so in this example uh, it says assume each cache set is two lines of cache so it means the set size here is two and in this case it's called two-way set assertive mapping technique the w will be calculated the same way from the block size four so it is two to know how many bits we need for the set first we have to calculate the number of sets in the cache the number of sets in the cache equal the number of lines divided by the set size 16k divided by 2 equal 8k so the number of sets is 8k now we need to know the number of bits needed to identify each set in the cache we take this 8k and write it in the format 2 to the power d so 8k equal 2 to the power 13 so d equal 13 then we calculate the tag s minus d we calculate s first 22 minus 13 equal 9 or simply we can 
calculate the uh, number of bits for the tag from this uh, we know the the total is 24 so if we have here 2 and 13 it's 15 24 minus 15 is 9 in the set associative mapping technique and associative mapping technique so we need some uh, algorithm to replace when the new data moved from the memory into the cache so which data we have to remove from the cache in the direct mapping there will be no problem because the data has only one line and in this case we have three algorithms to replace the content of the cache lines the first algorithm is called least recently used LRU the second is first in first out FIFO and the last is the least frequently used LFU so in the first algorithm which is the most effective one the uh, it will replace the block in the set that has been in the cache longest with no reference so the, the block in the cache memory with longest and with no reference to be replaced it will be deleted and replaced by the new block of the memory in the FIFO first and first out the block which has been in the cache longest to be deleted and replaced by the new data so in the least frequently used the block with the fewest reference will be deleted and replaced by the new block of the memory so the cache memory could be single level or multi-level if it is a multi-level cache some of the levels comes with the processor for example here if we have two level caches so the first level level one will be inside the cpu internal for the cpu and level two will be outside the cpu or external to the cpu in case of the cache memory will be in the same chip of the processor it has some advantages like it will reduce the processor external bus activity no need to read from outside speed up the execution time and hence it will increase the overall system performance in case of multi-level cache if we have two levels for example level one and level two so these two levels could be unified or split it unified means the cpu will treat it as a single unit one level and the advantage of this method is the higher hit rate in case of the split cache so one level the advantage of this case easier to prefetch instruction because the instructions will be in separate level no need for the cpu to search in both levels so it will search only in the instruction level cache this is the end of uh, lecture 8 now please try to answer the questions of tutorial 8 thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture